Welcome to Asher and Torah anytime. One of the stories of the Olib Asaltiv was that whenever he used to say Torah, he used to have on his on his table a half a bottle of whiskey. And when his face would turn red, there were those who used to laugh. And they were scoffers, they were late loitered to him. And they would say, you know why the Rebbe's face is red? Look, there's a half a bottle of Yash, there's a half a bottle of Mashka. Tell me them. You know why the Rebbe's face is red? Because the Rebbe just went up to heaven. And the question is, who's right? And the answer is, they're both right. It depends on your perception, and your perception creates your reality. So the idea is, that Moshe Rabbeinu comes down from heaven. It's Koran Oir Ponav. He brings down the Luchas. The Torah says that there was this light emanating from Moshe Rabbeinu. Nobody was able to look at him. So Hashem came and He told him he should put on a masve, a mask. What was this mask that Moshe Rabbeinu put on? You know, nobody ever talks about it. Was the mask like a veil? Was the mask like these anonymous masks? Was it a Trump mask? Maybe now it's a Biden mask. What was the mask that Moshe Rabbeinu was wearing? And you know, many times in life, we always wonder, why can't Hashem do things straight? Like Hashem is bringing down Moshe Rabbeinu on the world. He's bringing down Avkal and Neviyam. He's bringing down somebody who, Pe'al, Pe'al, David, he speaks to Hashem face to face. He's the Aspaklari Ami'ira. He's Pashtusa the Moshe Bechol Dara Vedara. Moshe Rabbeinu was the ultimate Novi. He's our, he's our leader. He couldn't give him the kalim. He couldn't give him the communication skills that he should effectively deliver the message. Why is Moshe Rabbeinu the one that has a speech impediment? And the answer is, maybe that was his mask. That was his mask. Everything in the world has a mask. Moshe Rabbeinu also has a mask. The Baal Shem Tov had a mask. Whenever Hashem communicates a message to us, there's a mask. So I want you to listen very deep to a Torah from the Torah Shlomo. He says an amazing Torah. It says, Vayemer Hashem al Moshe neteyas yotcha al HaShamayim. Hashem told Moshe, stretch your hand above the heaven. Ask the Torah Shlomo, what do you mean above the heaven? It should have said, Horoim yotcha al HaShamayim. Lift your hands up to the heavens. Not stretch out your hands above the heaven. Whenever we say the word heaven, you have to understand what is the word heaven? What does the word Shamayim mean? So you know when you're a little kid, then Shamayim, you look up at the sky. Shamayim is the blue sky with those white uh, puffy balls in it. That's the heaven. When you get a little older, you know like you have this, uh, my kids sometimes they eat ice cream, they say it's heaven. So then, heaven is ice cream. Then you have somebody, you go to, you get a little older, you go to a kumzis and you say, wow, a mom has brought me to heaven. So then your heaven is, is a good kumzis. Then you have somebody and you say, a fleet in the heaven, he's flying in the heavens. Usually means that he's, you know, out for lunch, he's not here, he's not down here below. Then you're saying he's out for lunch, he's in the heavens. But what does Shemayim mean? And the reality is that Shemayim means, is the cap. Shemayim is the ultimate of what you comprehend. Now can you imagine if you ask somebody what do you want the most in life? You know there's a lottery now, the mega millions, it's almost up to a billion dollars. You ask somebody what do you want from life? And he say what do you mean what do I want? I want money. When you go to Kibre Tzadikim, you go to the Pshaya Beremoshin, you say the Pshaya Beremoshin, I'm begging you, I'm, I'm pleading to you, give me a chef of Panasa, make me a millionaire, make me have a billion dollars. So then you're Asking the tzaddik to be harem yodoi el to lift his hands up to heaven. Which heaven? To your heaven. Your heaven, which is a billion dollars. Your heaven of the stuff that you want. When you connect to the tzaddik, and the tzaddik is nete yotcha al he's lifting his hand, he's stretching his hand above the heaven. It means you're asking him to bring you down something which is above your heaven. Something that transcends your heaven. And then, he's leading you to a place which is beyond your comprehension of the max cap that you had before. So that's the secret. The secret is that we connected to Dikim says that Tver 
not to bring us to our limit. Tzaddikim are here to connect us to something which is Allah Shemayim. To the, to the point that when you look down below, you say, You can look down below and see that my old heaven was Choshech. It was Mitzrayim, it was Mitzalim, it was a limit. It was more than constricted. And then you realize that my old heaven was really an earth. It was really a Mitzrayim because there's so many heavens beyond. But we can't get there on our own. I have a friend, he told me a Gabal story last week that he went to Africa with a whole group of Ashidim and there was a tour guide, this African tour guide and he was showing them around. Now after this entire tour he did a really good job. He was like a real a guy living in a village, a real guy from a native. Did a wonderful job and this Gvir, the guy who was sponsoring the whole party, gave him a tip. $500. Now they gave this guy this $500 he looked at it and he was like what do I do with this? what is this? <clears throat> so they told him that he wants to give you a tip he appreciates so much that you did such an amazing job he wants to so he said look you want to give me a tip something that's like wow get me a cow go to the market and buy me a cow like a cow <laughs> so they left so they went to the market and they found a cow, like the biggest, most mega cow that exists over there. I think he told me it cost like 200 and something dollars. And they figured, one cow, we'll buy two cows. So they come back with two cows, the two Ferrari cows, you know, the Tesla and the Ferrari, you know, they came to him with the Tesla and the guy. One was like 200 and something dollars, one was like 190 dollars. Altogether, it was less than 400 dollars, these two cows. And this guy's eyes were bulging. He couldn't believe it. He had no words. He was like, he said, I'm now the richest cousin. I'm the richest cousin, even that's the Racha Fetter. He said, you don't understand. He became the, he became the Puritz. He became the Puritz of the village. He said, you know, whatever it takes in America, to make your oyster crazy? You did it to me right now with these two cows. And I was like, wow. So that's Shemayim. You know, for him, one cow was Shemayim. Two cows was already Allah Shemayim. To the guy who's like playing with a billion dollars, that's a Shemayim. We all have Muridik uh, limited hasugas. Now, could you imagine that if your Shemayim is relationships? Could you imagine if you transcend cows and money and your Shemai becomes to be able to feel somebody else, to experience somebody else? <laughs> your brand new Shemai. If your Shemai is to be able to comprehend wisdom, to connect to a, a divine source, to go out of your own ego, to be there for other people, for the Zach, you know, just because there's so many layers of Shemayim. But whatever your highest layer of Shemayim is, to the ultimate Shemayim that you could even fathom, it's still your Shemayim. When you have to the Tzadik, he's in the Allah Shemayim, he takes you beyond that heaven, and he connects you to something that you've never been able to even fathom exists. That's why we connect it to them. So, you know, when we come into these Parshas, you know, this week, last week, there was major news that Trump was thrown off the social media. So one of the headlines said, Parlay goes dark at midnight. Parlay is this app, the right-wing app that Amazon threw off their web hosting service. And it said, Parlay goes dark at midnight. And it was like, you know, you know, that there's a market that comes down. Parley goes dark at midnight. And I realized, you know, the Chesidic masters talk about what is Choshech? So when you're a little child, Choshech means dark. Dark. You can't see. But you know, as dark as you think it is not to be able to see, could you imagine how much darker it is not to be seen? The Chesidic masters spoke about V'leiro ishes ochev. Makas Choshech was V'leiro ishes ochev people weren't able to see each other. You know what it means when brothers can't see each other? When you don't see others, when you're not seen, 
when you make other people not be able to be seen, that's a terrible choshech. So if you ask somebody, what's the worst choshech? To be physically blind and not be able to see? Or that you should not be seen? You would say, that's the worst thing in the world, to not be seen. And then you go to the next layer and you say, to not be able to see others and make them feel that they're not seen? That's choshech kafel mechopum. That's the worst choshech in the world. So, you know, a lot of times we try to connect to Makkas, but when it said parlay, parlay goes dark at midnight, that was the ultimate choshech. Could you imagine somebody who was tweeting at 88, you know, to 88 million people, which allowed him to be seen by a billion people? And this guy, you know, Trump used to sit, watch television. If he didn't like what they were saying on, on you know, what, what, what was going on, he would, like, tweet. And then he would just wait to see until he changed the whole conversation. He, like, controlled the whole bria. And then suddenly, in one minute, it went dark. He's in Choshech. There was never a bigger Choshech than the Choshech that he was going through. Shemayim has a limit. Shemayim has new layers. Shemayim has many levels. Choshech has its interpretation, a childish interpretation. But then there's a next level interpretation of Choshech. And as you go deeper and deeper, it takes on a whole new mashmoz. So, when you go back into the world of Choshech and you say, why did Hashem have to make so many Marcus? Why did He have to do this? And we spoke about it. That very few of us really believe in Hashem. We walk around that we're big believers, we're big Bamina, we wear all different types of black hats, and we wear Makayim, all different mitzvahs. But in reality, how much of a believer are we? And you know when we believe? Unfortunately, we only believe either when it's irrelevant or when we have no other choice. Everyone believes in Yom Kippur because it was custom. But when the guy steals that deal from you, when you feel backstabbed, when you told somebody to do something and he didn't, when somebody was supposed to be responsible and he wasn't, whenever something happened where it touches you, suddenly we get mad. If you're getting mad and you don't believe, we have to be mamish be brought down to our knees. We have to go through a choshech in order for us to say, Hashem, hello. You trying to call me? What do you say? I'm sorry, I'm available now. So we go through this process of, we don't believe. We're all pari melech mitzrayim. Me and you are pari melech mitzrayim. Mitzrayim is your world of mitzrayim, of limitations, of the things that you only do a certain way. You rule it. You believe in many different gods. You might think that Avodah was, Zarah was, was annulled, but in reality, we have yet we have not the Yetzer, that Avodah Zarah doesn't exist. Of course, it exists. It exists. Whenever we get upset at something, we're seeing that there's a, a there's a power on its own. And in reality, all Hashem wants is us to realize that there's one controller that's controlling the whole game. That there's one scriptwriter. There's one puppet master that's manipulating all the puppets. We go through Makkas in our lives in order to realize it. So who comes to us and tells us that Hashem has a message for you? He's called Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu is the, is the leader, is the teacher that comes and he lets you know, Achi, God has a message for you. But I want you to know something. Moshe Rabbeinu always has a master. It always has a mask which is going to allow you to justify and reinterpret and say, No! It's different. That's called a masfa. This masfa comes through in anything in our life. We will always have a justification. You know, I was once talking to somebody. He told me that, wow, he wishes he would be able to be around when Nachman was alive. And I told him, I can, I can like bet. I asked him, how many people do you think were around Ibn Nachman when he lived? 50 people? 100 people? 200 people? 300 people? How many people were around Ibn Nachman in his circle? Very few people. Can't imagine 300 people. What happened to all the other people? There was a masla. There was reasons why they understood that the Nachman. You're coming a few hundred years later, and you think that if Nachman would be around, you would be the ones who punched in. There would be the same masla. He would have the same amount of people. It's the same idea when people come around and they say, today there's no tzaddikim anymore. I have a secret to tell you. When they were tzaddikim, they also had a masla. They had characteristics. They had certain ways of doing things. People had questions on them. It didn't make sense. It didn't add up. And you said, no, he, he's not my tzaddik. 
there were a few people who were Makashim, they said, no, Hashem created a world that has a Shamayim. There's a way that they, and I'm Makashim myself to the Tzaddik, and I will believe even though I have questions and even though there's a Masa. And that goes on till today. There's still Tzaddikim today. There's people who can bring you to a higher layer of comprehension, who can take you above your sky limit. They're the Tzaddik. As long as you're a yourself and you're going to listen and the person is an El and he's there for you, he's not there not for cover, not for money, and he's here for a real reason, and you're a yourself and you listen, he'll take you to places you've never gone to before because your mind is going to ask questions, you're going to do it anyway, and you'll transcend. And that tzaddik is not something that it doesn't have to do with chassidus, it has nothing to do with who your father's tzaddik is or who your father's rebbe is. It has to do with your davening to Hashem. Hashem, you created a world with skies, with limits. But I believe that there's a beyond. And you created tzaddikim. And I'm asking Hashem, I'm begging you, let me be makash myself to that tzaddik. Chazal say, Rashi brings it, that Moshe and Aaron were equal. And everybody asks, can you say Moshe and Aaron were school? And Moshe and Aaron are the same. Moshe Rabbeinu was the Kambi Yisrael Kamoisha. He's the greatest honor of Moshe Rabbeinu. You know, Arna Koyen. Arna Koyen is a nice guy. He's Oyev Sholem. He's Makarvas Abriyas Latoira. Like the Alter Rebbe, like the Baltanya says that Briya is. Why doesn't it say Makarva Nashim Latoira? Because there are certain people in the world that the only thing you can say good about them, actually, you can't say anything good about them. All you can say is that they're Briya, they're creations. And he was Makarav Brio Isletoida, the Briam. People who are just preachers. So you say, it's really beautiful, peace and love. But you know what the Teretz is? Moshe can't communicate. That's his masva. Moshe Rabbeinu's mask is his inability to communicate. Av Nakoyan, he is the communicator. Hashem placed Adam to be his communicator. So if you would bring this whole picture into our own minds, into our world, we would say like this. Listen, I'm Padre. I have many gods. I rule over my own Mitzrayim. God gives me makas. He gives me situations which bring me to my knees. I feel sometimes unseen. Let's talk about the Choshech. And then Moshe Rabbeinu comes, that's part of my mind. Moshe Rabbeinu comes and he tells me, Achi, Hashem is trying to communicate to you. He wants you to realize that there is one unified God. My matzva kicks in and I have a justification not to comprehend it and understand it. And then the key is if I can get to Aaron. Aaron is that ability that interprets what's going on and says, No, we're talking to you and your matzav because I want you to get it. He is the one who gets the message across the pattern. That's why he's cool. And when you go into that world, suddenly it becomes relevant. It's alive. We're living mamush in that world. We're living in that generation where we have the oitzeres of Torah to teach us what goes on within ourselves. What goes on outside is a muscle. It's an example. It's a metaphor of what goes on within our souls. So Hashem should help us. That we should be able to live with these parshas. We're living in Gaval times. Things are changing. Today we went through one of the most uh, historic inaugurations of all time. People were convinced, without, beyond a shadow of a doubt, to the last second, that you know Trump is going to make it. And then all of our old assumptions just fell apart. And Biden became president. And like the conspiracy theories collapsed. Some people are still trying to make new ones, but there's still old questions, and there's unknown. There's so much going on, so much uncertainty. We're living in a very interesting world. Whenever these things happen, it's the time to get on our hands and knees, at least not literally, but to get down in a space of bittel and say, Hashem, something's going on. There's a message that you're trying to get through to me in my little world. I'm begging you, let me connect to the tzaddik who can download that message for me today.